hello guys what's going on you're welcome to another video and in this video i'm going to be showing you how to set up your sublime text editor to use flutter so in this video the purpose of this video is to show you how to set up your environment so that you can write code that um, allows you to um, debug and work with flutter projects so what am i trying to say here is that Generally, we use either Visual Studio Code or um, Android Studio or IntelliJ for Flutter work. But now you can actually use um, Sublime Text, which is my favorite text editor, uh, using the LSP Dart plugin. Uh, and you can use that to write your Flutter code or Dart code now, and everything is going to work just as it works on. Um, Visual Studio Code and IntelliJ. Now, a couple of things to note: it's not as feature-rich as it is in Visual Studio Code or IntelliJ because it's not a um, support. It's not an officially supported plugin for Sublime Text. But there's still a couple of features missing, you know, some buttons here and there and all. But it mostly works the syntax aligning, code completion, and a bunch of other things already work. So we're gonna be testing that out in this video. But for now. I just wanted to tell you guys that you can actually write Flutter code using this um, plugin LSP Dart in Sublime Text. And the next video tutorial I want to make in regards to Flutter, I'm going to be using my Sublime Text just to show you guys that this actually works. And it's what I'm going to be using to write my Sublime uh, my Flutter code from now on, simply because it's just faster and much better for me. Um, you know the user experience or the programming experience is much better for me compared with Visual Studio Code because Sublime Text is very very fast. So let's get down to it. The first thing I want you to do is to go to this link github.com slash sublime lsp slash lsp dart. So this plugin is what we're going to be installing and this is what allows us to be able to um, you know write code that um, interfaces with the dot analysis server and gives us code completion and every other thing like that so a couple of things we're going to need is first of all we're going to need to install the lsp package and how do we do that um where am i right so the first thing we have to do is to hit ctrl shift p and type uh install so you have package control install package make sure you click on that and once you do that what we want to install is what is called the lsp package so the lsp package is what uh provides the language server protocol for sublime text so you might already have this installed so just type lsp and you should see lsp show up here for you to install now once you've installed lsp you don't have to do it again i already have the lsp package installed so i'm not gonna do it again but if you type lsp you're gonna get the lsp package so you can install it right there and then now once you've installed the LSP package, we also need something to help us with syntax aligning. So we have the dot light for that. And uh, so you're just going to say uh, install again. And this time we want to install the dot light. I already have it installed again. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do it again. Make sure you do that. So you can get syntax aligning for dot. And once you do that, of course, you're going to need your Flutter SDK. If you have your Flutter SDK, you already have your dot SDK. So you don't have to... Um, install a separate dot sdk to make this work so once you have your flutter installation ready make sure you have the path to your flutter installation all right so the next thing we have to do is generally if you want to um, set preferences for your plugins you just have to say something like lsp and then the name of the um you know settings or preferences you can have something like preferences and then lsp whatever and but for some reason lsp dart is not showing up in this list for me so what I did instead was I just clicked on one of this and I get the path to, you know, um, to the, to this, um, LSP YAML that I have installed, you know, so that I can get the path to where I can put the sublime settings. And that's exactly what I did. So I get, I got to the path here and then I have user. And so I just did the name of the, um, plugin, which is LSP hyphen dart sublime settings so if for some reason you cannot find lsp dart in your preferences to click on then you can do it like this 
just make sure you have the LSP iPhone dot the sublime settings I'm going to leave the contents of these um, uh, LSP dot the sublime settings in the description so you can copy it and paste it just as you uh, so you can use that in your program now what does it look like what is the contents of that so you're gonna find uh, this is not it let me close this so you're gonna find that here so this is what the LSP dot the sublime settings look like uh, you can see it's really simple we just have the M and so the M is what allows us to set environment variables that LSP dot is going to read in order to find whatever it needs so here we're, we're setting flutter root so what is flutter root flutter root is the uh, root of our flutter installation so wherever you installed your flutter um, um, library it should be you should provide the path to that so I have my flutter root set here this is this is what allows the um, LSP dart to find your um, dart analysis server so you can run it and start you know analysis for you and we also have some other settings like initialization options all of these are not mandatory but I just decided to have those you know because I feel like they will be useful so we have closing labels we have uh, show to do's complete function calls and there are a bunch of other settings you can find so if you want to find them just go back to the browser and you can see that if you go to so you can see that this is these are all it's possible for you to do when you're working with the dart analysis server inside of sublime text so if you want to see some other settings that you can have just go to the lsp dart the sublime settings and you should be able to find a bunch of things here so you see initialization options just like we had here so you see we have closing labels uh, outline is not implemented so I that's why I didn't even bother to set it no both of these are not implemented just yet but we have closing labels all of these are already default that I like but if you want to change that make sure you set that and once you do that the next thing we have to do is to create a flutter project and try to open it inside of um, um, sublime text to see if this actually works so that's what we're gonna be doing right now so here this is the command to create a flutter project um, this assumes that of course you set up your flutter installation so that you can create project so since I'm on Linux I'm going to just set my platform to Linux uh, you could completely omit this if you don't want if you just want to create the default project for all the supported platforms inside of your um, inside of your architecture or your operating system for now I'm just going to create for the Linux target because you know why the hell not and I'm going to give the project name sublime underscore test so I'm going to hit the enter uh, key just to create the project so the project has been created so we can list uh, so that we can find the directory here so we're gonna go to sublime test just like this now you can find our fuller project is inside of here so what I, what I want to do is to open this inside of sublime text and there are a couple of ways I could do this I'm just gonna close this out right so I have the sublime command already set up so I'm just gonna hit dot because I'm inside of the sublime text directory so what you could do I'm just gonna do this first and then I'm gonna show you what you could do is to click on file open folder and then go to the folder where your um, you know whatever is set up so you can open it from there this is just a convenient shortcut to open from the command line if you're using Linux I'm guessing there's a way to do that for Windows but you're gonna have to figure that out on your own so right so the first thing we want to do is you can see that nothing is happening right now so all you just gotta do is come over here to the main the dart and you can see right out of the gate you see we have very very beautiful code completion and this is provided to us by the dart light um, package that's what allows us to do syntax highlighting just as you can see right here and now you can see down here that we have the dart uh, thing here so hopefully my dart analysis server has been um, initialized and uh, you know things will start working as i expect i'm just gonna have to uh, wait a minute so what can i do here okay so you can see here it says analyzing this is what i was waiting for so sometimes the first time you run the dart analysis server it takes um time to you know do some analysis and make sure that your project is correctly set up before everything starts working as expected now a couple of things that is missing from this uh, compared with Visual Studio Code is you know the run um, so we have the uh, run uh, debug button that is usually inside of uh, 
uh, that is usually inside of Visual Studio Code is missing here. So you're gonna have to go to your terminal, for example, and you can do Flutter on here, and uh, that should work just as expected. And also, of course, hot reload and hot restart or whatever can only be done from the terminal. I don't really have an issue with that. I mean, this is much better to just have code completion and uh, syntax highlighting and, uh, you know, linting inside of Sublime Text and I can do the hot reload or whatever inside of uh, my terminal. I feel like that's a little convenient for me. I find that convenient, but, you know, everybody has things that, uh, you know, they actually prefer inside of a, a text editor or IDE. So, yeah. So that's be, that's pretty much it. So once this is ready, as you can see, it also gives you what is called uh, get out of my face. So it also has all these code actions. For example, organize imports. As you can see, there's no import to organize because we have only one import here. But you know, it, it basically gives you some of all these things where you know if you have anything. First of all, for example, let's just write a simple uh, widget. Let me see what do we have here. So if I, for example, you're gonna see that it's gonna give me uh, proper uh, LinkedIn, so you see here, this is an error message. It says the constructor being called is in the const constructor, blah, blah blah blah. So you can see that everything actually works as you might expect. So you can see a lot of code actions now that we so you see remove const, and you can see everything's good. So everything's good, and you can see if you look here properly, or if I can if I can talk, so you can see that we have this giving us a suggestion it says we should add a const modifier because um, a const constructor is more appropriate in this case. So we're gonna do that, we're gonna add const, and then here, you see that we're not using a const constructor, so we could also add the code samples. I have a shortcut that allows me to just, you know, get this, uh, get out of my face. So, uh, uh, where the hell is it? So I have the const modifier to make things work, and I just find this is a little more convenient compared with Visual Studio Code, and um, yeah, so that will be all for this video. In the next video, I'm going to be creating a complete project the complete and simple UI that we're gonna work with. I'm gonna do everything using Sublime Text and Flutter. All right, and that's so that will be all for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Turn on the notifications, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.